Well, good afternoon to all of you. This is a frantically busy time of year. There are a lot of contrasting events going on here at Long Beach City College today. And this is a very, very important day for us to pause even for just a few minutes to recognize and say thank you to our colleagues who day in and day out really do contribute to make our work for our students and for us as colleagues special. 2012 celebrates the 26th year that Long Beach City College Outstanding Colleague Award is being presented. For the past 26 years, the Outstanding Colleague Award has honored LBCC employees who exemplify outstanding service to the college, its constituent groups, and the college community. Each year, administrators, faculty, and staff have the opportunity to honor fellow co-workers by nominating someone who they feel has made an outstanding contribution to the college and who is deserving of special recognition. This award stands out as a special and very coveted recognition because the recipients are nominated and selected by their colleagues and peers. Members of the Long Beach City College Renewal Committee review all of the nominations and ultimately select the recipients that best exemplify the desired qualities of an outstanding colleague. Nominations are based on a colleague's exceptional knowledge and abilities in the performance of their job, as well as their campus leadership roles. It also recognizes work in the community that enhances the image of Long Beach City College, along with the nominee's generosity in sharing their time and talent for the benefit of LBCC students, colleagues, and the greater college community. Over the past 26 years, over a thousand LBCC employees have been nominated, but only a small group of just over a hundred have earned this prestigious award. Ladies and gentlemen, to open this afternoon's presentation, I call your attention to the screen for the video introductions of this year's outstanding colleagues. Hello, my name is Marshall Fulbright and I'm a faculty member in the Music, Radio, and Television Department. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you our Outstanding Colleague Award to Dr. Peter Knapp. Peter is our department chair and is absolutely one of the best colleagues that I have ever had. He is always there, he is always supportive of faculty, students, administration. He is the one that is the glue for the entire department. He is dedicated to family with two children. He's a triathlete who gets up and is swimming at 5.30 in the morning and is right there ready to teach at eight o'clock uh, in class. Peter is a hardworking member of our faculty as an academic senator, as chair of the program review committee, and as our department chair. Peter is absolutely one of those that all of us as faculty should aspire to be in the sense that he is as dedicated and as committed to education as I have ever seen anyone, anyone be. Please help me in congratulating Dr. Peter Knapp. Based on nomination by your colleagues, friends, and associates, and with final selection of the Renewal Committee, and this truly is my great pleasure to recognize Dr. Peter Knapp as the 2012 Outstanding Colleague. Thank you. Um, when they came to uh, surprise me, I was actually in musicianship class, so I was sitting at the piano, and um, Gary walks in, and Eli walks in, and all these other people walking in, and I thought, well, maybe they need a piano player to sing somebody happy birthday. Um, so it took me a while for it to figure it out until somebody handed me flowers. So that was, uh, again, a very nice surprise. Um, you know, and Marshall, Marshall's my office mate, and he's also taking over for me as chair, which I am uh, very thankful for. He's going to be an excellent uh, person to take over the department, and um, I really appreciated getting to know him as well. And um, it's funny, he mentioned about swimming in the pool. Um, Jeff Wheeler uh, was one of the other nom uh, nominated me, and um, he swims on one side of me, and Connie swims on the other side of me. So we have this real connection there in the water. 
Um, this has been a, a really great surprise and an honor. It's uh, humbling um, to think about, um, you know, you're just trying to get your job done and you're trying to, you know, help out as many people as you can, move, as Gary says, move the ball forward. Um, so it's been a, a real pleasure, pleasure to have this uh, recognition, but just realizing how many other people here on campus are all trying to do the same thing, um, work as hard as we can um, for the students and um, to ultimately help them be successful. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Hi, I'm Richard Yench, the Interim Director of Financial Aid, and I'm here to talk to you about Irene Polly. I've, been, I've known Irene for going on about 11 years now, since I came to Long Beach City College in February of 2001. Uh, I'm supposed to introduce you and tell you about why Irene is such an outstanding colleague. But judging by what Camille has told me the other day about it seemed like uh, almost everybody at the college had nominated Irene, I think you're already pretty familiar with why she's an outstanding colleague and her work. So maybe to better illustrate it, I'll tell you some things or something about Irene that you don't know, or at least most of you don't. I call Irene the pest. The reason I call her the pest is because she's always emailing me, calling me, contacting me one way or another about ways that we can help students asking me, can we have a work study for this student? Can we have SEOG for this student? Can we have more SEOG for this other student? How about a book grant? On and on. Well, in fact, even today. Today she, was, she contacted me about a homeless student who needed work study. We were able to help that student, by the way. And I found that it doesn't do any good to ignore her to put her off because she's persistent. She follows up and that's why I call her the pest. So I think that tells you how she works, what she does, and how sincere and genuinely interested and caring that she is about students. And we feel fortunate to have her in the financial aid office here at Long Beach City College and we look forward to having her for a lot more time. So here's Irene. Based upon the nominations of your peers and colleagues and all the wonderful people around you, and with the final selection by the Renewal Committee, I'm pleased to recognize you as one of our truly outstanding colleagues. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> I told you don't say that. <laughs> wow. I'm just, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'd like to, to thank the people that nominated me for this prestigious award. I know that there are so many hardworking people here um, at both campuses that are deserving of this. And um, I'd like to share a short Stop it, Dorothy. I'd like to share a short background um, of my time here. I started classes at PCC in 1985, and I began working as federal work study, and I was privileged to work with Dean Barnes. I imagine many of you remember him, and Ann Hill. So we can Sorry. Hear you. I worked with um, Dean Barnes and Maria Diaz and Ann Hill, and they did so much to encourage me when I started here. And they shaped me into the person that I am today. Um, I continued as a, a student assistant and then an LTE. I love this college, especially the PCC campus. I see people like myself grow and be able to move on and give to others. Um, I've met so many special students and I enjoy getting to know them. 
and they grow and they move on and they give to others. Uh, when I started um, working in the financial aid office at the LAC campus, uh, a position opened up as a financial aid technician. So I decided that I would try for that position because I really enjoyed working there. And um, it opened up, I got it, and it was at the campus that I love, PCC. So um, this campus has had my heart for 22 years. It's just such a wonderful campus. Um, people are like family. You get to know the students and what they're going through and how they change. And I've had so much um, kindness shown to me throughout the years that I have been here. And I'd like to thank a few special people in my life. Um, Dorothy Gutierrez, she worked a lot with me when I got here. <laughs> Betty Steffen, who helped me through many problems with students, many problems with myself. And Lydia Turner, Dr. Mike McCallum, um, Richard Yinch, <laughs> Frank Menjivar, and Tony Dubois, who's here today. <laughs> Tony and I started out together. She was one of the people that interviewed me, but I won't say what she said. <laughs> and then um, I'd also like to thank the people that I work with in my office. Um, there's Susanna Duran and Dara Alvarez, Tracy, I can't say her last name. Did I say you, Frank? Okay. And I think that's it. Um, we work together um, very well in our office. We always have each other's back. We're always watching to make sure that if any of us need help, we have it. And Dr. Baruch, I cannot say your last name, <laughs> but a very special thank you to you for all that you have done for this. Thank you. I'm Suzanne Whitmer. I'm the women's volleyball coach here at Long Beach City College as well as a faculty member here in our kinesiology and athletics department. It is my honor and my pleasure to introduce Donna Prindle for this year's Outstanding Colleague Award. Donna always goes the extra mile with her contributions to our kinesiology and athletics department and to the community of Long Beach. Her tireless dedication to excellence and her unfailing commitment to her students is an inspiration to us all. Donna served as our head women's volleyball coach. Under Prindle, the Vikings made four state championship final four appearances, and also Prindle was named South Coast Conference Women's Volleyball Coach of the Year twice. She continues to do great things for our college as she works endless hours taking care of our bunnies. For the past two years, Donna has worked every single day to provide us with a safer campus through the Rabbit Task Force while ensuring that the rabbits are treated humanely and placing them in good homes. Congratulations, Donna. Well deserved. Donna, come on up. Donna, based upon the nomination from your colleagues, peers, and many rabbits, and by final selection of the Renewal Committee, I wish to recognize you as one of our outstanding colleagues. Thank you. Congratulations. Wow. I was uh, told they showed up at the Rabbit Center, and I thought they were all coming to adopt bunnies. I got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> but I was still excited when they told me why they were there. <laughs> Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, those of you who took the time to nominate me and the committee for selecting me. It's an honor and I'm truly um, grateful for that. Um, 
I've discovered that there are some things in life that capture your interest, and there's others that capture your heart. Those are things you need to follow wherever they lead you. 35 years ago, I was fortunate to have found a place here at Long Beach State College that allowed me to follow my heart. That path has had some interesting twists and turns. As a coach, I found myself as the mom of several teenage girls, um, trying to help them build confidence and explore their abilities through the competitive experience. As a teacher in kinesiology, um, I've had the opportunity to share with my students the importance of fitness and health and the incredible mind-body connection that we all have. Now, most recently, it seems um, the path has taken me into the world of rabbits. <laughs> Funny how life turns, turns it go, that, that life takes you. It simply started with uh, Shane Sheffield. I mean, remember her, she was took care of the cats on campus, and she innocently one day asked me to help her with the cats over here. I said, sure, I can do that. And that led to Jackie Olson telling me about the rabbits. And now, two years later, I am deeply involved in the rabbit project. They have most definitely captured my heart. Uh, we've had over 300 come through our rabbit center. Um, they're being cared for by our students, our faculty, staff, and many community volunteers. Um, we've healed them, we've loved them, cared for them, and passed them on to their new homes. Um, as I've traveled this past, I have met and worked with so many wonderful people. Many of you are here today. Um, I'd like to introduce my twin sister, a rival coach for many years. <laughs> It's interesting, when we were recruiting, they'd call up and want to ask, speak to Coach Prindle, and i go, well, which one? Which one? <laughs> um, she's been a colleague and a best friend all these years. Um, but I want to thank all of you for your wisdom support through the years. Um, our college has been through many ups and downs during my time here. And all I know is that our students are the future. We must continue to do all we can to protect their educational opportunities. Thank you for this. <laughs> I'm Cindy Hanks, and I'm very pleased and proud to introduce Fred Rosmanuk as an outstanding colleague. Fred has devoted his life to Long Beach City College, and he's now in his 34th year here. Fred started at Long Beach City College in 1979 in the Foreign Language Department, and then moved over to the Media Production Area in 1999. Fred's abilities and talents, there are too many to mention here. I mean, uh, he's a writer, a producer, director, editor, actor, voiceover artist, just to name a few. Fred's one of those overachievers who never does anything halfway. He's smart, passionate, and he's very funny. In addition to his work here, he has a seventh degree black belt in karate and worked for many years with Chuck Norris. Fred's also taught self-defense for women for over 30 years. Fred is unique in his passion and in his dedication. One example of Fred's work ethic, he had a rat crawl under his office floor and die. And it was only discovered because of the smell. Well, Fred had a project and he had a deadline and he didn't want to stop working. So what does Fred do? He gets the smelliest cologne he can find sprays it all over his office to cover the dead rat smell and continues working. Needless to say, that combined smell drove all of us out of the building. Anyone who knows Fred knows that he has never met a meal he didn't like. But fortunately, at our insistence, he no longer brings pickled herring and Limburger cheese to work for lunch. Another one of Fred's contributions to Long Beach City College he was the cover boy for the 1988 Long Beach City College Campus Cutie Calendar. He was also Mr. July that year. Fred always goes above and beyond. A number of years ago, we were encouraged to support student life by wearing costumes to work on Halloween. So 
Fred, in his typical Fred fashion, decides he's going to show his true Viking spirit. So he shows up to work dressed as Conan the Barbarian, wearing only fur boots, a loincloth, and carrying a sword. His department head at the time was Lorraine Yaki. <laughs> she took one look at him, said, oh, no, 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 this will never, never do. Sent him home to put on his clothes. Fred H. Rosmanek, you are truly a Long Beach City College legend and a treasure. Thank you so much for always making me laugh, for being my friend, for being a wonderful colleague. This award is long overdue. Ich gratuliere, mein Freund. of a number of groupies, <laughs> Chuck Norris, as well as your colleagues, peers, and final selection, although it was close by the Renewal Committee, I'm proud to, uh, to announce you as uh, our outstanding colleague. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, stick a fork in me. I'm, I think I'm, I'm roasted enough. Wow. Whew, that was hilarious. Uh, I work in a crazy department. I don't know if you noticed, but you know, everybody from the boss on down, we're all totally insane, and it's just a great place to work. Okay, um, it's indeed a pleasure and an honor to be here getting this award that puts me in the company of a lot of truly distinguished people. Um, unlike Rodney Dangerfield, it really is easy being me. And that's because I get a lot of help from my friends. And uh, I'm an extremely fortunate person because my work here is part of a career path, a passion, and a calling. And oh yeah, there's also the challenge of constantly learning new technology and keeping up with the changes. But the reason that's easy is because a lot of people go out of their way to support the efforts of my area. Let me start by thanking my parents who obviously did the groundwork to help me get to where I am. My mom's sitting right there. And my dad who's passed on. Thank you. <laughs> Hang on, she'll hijack this party yet. Um, and of course my dad who's passed on and is smiling down and probably laughing as you know what off. Uh, here on the job, I need to, I absolutely need to thank uh, Jerome Thomas and Blake McIntosh who have my back and that pretty much says it all. When you've got ADHD, you really need people to help keep you in line and keep you, give you honest feedback as well as moral support and technical expertise. As most of you know, my area has more equipment than people, so whenever we shoot a big event, we need to borrow people from other areas. This ad hoc model may be the one we all have to use from now on, so I, I want to thank Colleagues such as C.C. Sadler, whose graphic arts talent has embellished many a production and uh, cable TV program, and who with Leslie Heber has been on many of our camera crews. Leslie and Monica Mravick also provide a great deal of technical support to our area. I want to thank the crew in community relations and marketing, Camille, Bar uh, Camille Mark, Lynn, and Bill for their support for our area. Uh, anytime you're asked to videotape an event, a lot of support people are involved behind the scenes. I want to thank among others, Danny Toe, Jonathan Ekman, all of, this, all of the facility crews who do a great job of setting up these large events. And thanks a lot to all the people in IITS like Mark, Arnie, Roger, Danny, and Tim who keep us operational when the network goes down or computers conk out. Uh, IITS, probably one of the greatest ideas of the decade. <laughs> thanks to Leticia Suarez, we have the idea. Thank you to Jay Field for making the idea a reality. And thanks to everybody in IITS for being part of the greatest technical pool of talent I've ever seen. Our jobs, I'm talking about Jerome and Blake and myself, our jobs are earning many partnerships with other areas that work together to make things happen. Thanks to Colleen and Sean, whose staffs we need to plunder periodically to have enough people to do these productions, as well as Greg, Doug, Shiraz, and Myra Art, and Jamie from MESS, a subsidiary of IITS, a holding corporation for the college. 
Um, that particular crew, MESS, M-E-S-S, -S, uh, they do important things for the college, like provide mics for events such as these, make sure the technology-based classrooms function properly, little things like that. And of course, Tim Parge for his excellent audio feeds throughout the years. And if I haven't named you specifically, it's only because I'm either having a brain meltdown or we have to move this thing along. You know who you are, and I really do appreciate everything you've done. Obviously, there are a lot of other people who've helped me in the past 33 years. I can't mention them all, but I, I did spend 20 years in the foreign language department, and I want to thank Ken Carter and, and Anita Kano for their uh, moral support and for hiring me, and Hertha Keilbach, with whom I teamed up to produce a German textbook, audio tapes, videotapes, and exercise manual. This was an early ebook multimedia production experience and, and was really one of many fantastic learning experiences I've had here at the college. The college has provided me with so many chances to learn things, it's just been unbelievable. I started here as a student in 1970, uh, and I, I swear I've learned more on the job than I did ever in school. It's just been absolutely fantastic. And that's because I work with so, so many fantastic people. I want to thank Heritage and Gretchen Marlotti, who authorized my design for one of the first computerized learning labs on campus. This was exciting stuff back then, because back then, most schools still used tape recorders. And the LBCC Foreign Language Digital Lab used the internet, special software, and had students produce their own PowerPoint presentations in various languages. Thanks also to Bob Montavani, originator of the Renewal Group and this event, who mentored me in the area of career counseling, and to Allison Bowers and Phyllis Arias, and I know I pronounced it wrong, but that's the best I can do, who encouraged me to teach computer literacy, class, literacy classes for CEPAS. Very important too, Cindy Hanks, my friend, co-conspirator, and current supervisor, who actually brought me the announcement flyer and urged me to apply for my current position. Unfortunately, due to the dire economic crisis, many of the people I just thanked, my friends, colleagues, and coworkers will either be laid off or have their hours reduced. The irony is not lost on me. I also recognize and empathize with the many managers and administrators who have done their best to keep the college afloat during these horrific financial times and who have agonized about having to lay people off and reduce hours. I've talked with many of my fellow managers and we're all painfully aware of the effect this will have on students and the college mission. I know the impact of staff members will be missed and for a while it will feel like we're driving a car with one flat tire. It can't go fast, it can't go very far, and it's going to be one heck of a bumpy ride. I wish all of you lots of luck and truly believe your best days are not behind you, but they are still to come. I will miss you. I wish you the best. <clears throat> I've been unemployed when the company I worked for went out of business, and I know it's a huge loss, second only to the loss of a loved one. Again, I want to thank the Renewal Committee and congratulate my fellow colleagues and everyone who made today possible. God bless you all. My name is Taylor Robertson and I'm the Interim Assistant Athletic Director. Connie Sears, congratulations. You have spent your professional career in helping others achieve their personal, academic, and athletic goals. As a faculty member, you have touched the lives of many students in a positive, enriching, and supportive manner. And as administrator, you have facilitated the efforts of your faculty, staff, and coaches. I want to say thank you from all of us from Student Affairs, Kinesiology, and Athletics. And from the bottom of my heart, you've always been an inspiration and an amazing woman. Congratulations, Connie Sears, for receiving Outstanding Colleague of 2012. nomination by your colleagues and friends and final selection by the renewal committee I want to congratulate you on being one of our truly outstanding colleagues okay so I said I wouldn't get choked up I lied <laughs> 
Whoa, Taylor, thank you. Um, first, I would um, hard act to follow following Fred. However, I have a really good idea now that I'm over student affairs for our next uh, brochure, so Fred will talk after. <laughs> I'd first like to um, recognize uh, the on other honorees as well. I am humbled uh, to be in this group uh, and to be counted amongst the outstanding colleagues at Long Beach City College. Um, I'd also like to thank the committee for all of their hard work, dedication, and uh, thoughtful, uh, thoughtfulness that went into the selections. There are, are truly so many uh, great people here at Long Beach City College, and I am honored to uh, be a part of the Long Beach City College family. Um, also, no one in life stands alone. and. I definitely uh, have the strong support of teams and my family, and uh, just to recognize my, my family, my husband, uh, Rusty, is here, <laughs> who is also an educator, um, my daughter, Jennifer, <laughs> also an educator. She is uh, educating our uh, next generation to come uh, as a second grade teacher. My daughter, Samantha, is unable to be here. She also is an educator and an athletic director um, at Marina High School, and she's busy also educating um, our next group of uh, students at Long Beach City College. So uh, education truly uh, is in our family. I also uh, want to recognize uh, the teams, the great teams of support from uh, the School of uh, Saka, uh, from uh, Student Affairs, thank you so much, my newest family, uh, Anita, Rocio, Derek, Wald, uh, Pam, Jay Marie, Miles, Maya, I could go on and on, and I know I missed someone, and please don't hate me for that. My athletic and kinesiology family I've long been a member of. Um, my journey at Long Beach City College has been uh, multifaceted. I think I've been and served at Long Beach City College in just about every capacity imaginable, from a part-time faculty to faculty to my experiences, wonderful experiences with the faculty at Long Beach City College, as a member of the Academic Senate, uh, moving to the athletic director position, my colleagues in that area, and now uh, as the uh, Dean of Student Affairs, Kinesiology, and Athletics my wonderful mentors and friends, uh, my current members, uh, Dr. Peterson uh, uh, is my uh, current member in the area of uh, student affairs, kinesiology, and athletics, uh, President Oakley. So many mentors, so many people have been in influential in my development and my journey. Every part of my journey has been, has touched my heart. Hopefully I have done some positive things as we all come together each and every day to impact students' success and their goals in a positive manner. We are one, we are one family, we have one goal, and that one goal is the continued success of our students as they pass through Long Beach City College to reach their life goals. Thank you very much for this honor. Jim Truitt's been an outstanding colleague at Long Beach City College since uh, he was a student in the mid-1980s. Soon after that, he started working part-time. Uh, he and Nancy Redmond, the Viking newspaper advisor, plugged in the first personal computers at Long Beach City College in the mid-1980s in the classroom right behind us here in P126. He's worked the last 24 years as a Viking photo advisor, uh, also as a journalism lab technician. He's also worked as an uh, instructional associate for the English department. And the Viking newspapers for the last 25, 28 years or so add up to, we counted them, 562 print editions of the Viking newspaper. 562 that Jim Truitt has worked on as a student and most of them as an employee. That's not even counting the online Facebook and Twitter updates that he's done with students over the years. Uh, the Viking newspaper and the journalism program would not exist uh, if it wasn't for Jim Truitt. I've taken sabbaticals, students have come and gone, People have been out ill, people have been replaced, part-time faculty have come and gone, uh, but Jim Truitt has been the mainstay since the mid-1980s. Uh, amazing technician with the camera, uh, amazing computer expert. Uh, people from all over the campus come by here to get Jim Truitt's computer expertise, 
uh, whether it be a PC or a Mac, although Jim does favor the Mac, Apple computers, but he adjusts everything. Printer jams, no problem. Jim walks into the room and before he even touches the printer, it's working again. Student has a computer question, a problem, a computer is froze, a story is lost. Jim walks in a couple keep strokes later and the story has been rescued. He's certainly uh, done a lot for journalism. Uh, he works extra hours. Our Viking newspaper uh, deadline is 5 p.m. on Wednesday. We finish by 5 or 6, sometimes 7. Uh, a few of those years it was midnight. Jim was always here to the very end even though his work shift ended at 5. He goes out to the Mini Grand Prix. He goes to the football games. He goes to Pacific Coast Campus. He goes to the award ceremonies at night. He takes uh, students with him on the weekend, loans them his own camera lenses. Um, the students always applaud most heartily for Jim when he's recognized at our annual awards banquet. A couple years ago in the Press-Telegram, uh, they covered his 500th Viking newspaper. That would have been summer of 08. A uh, huge recognition, a big surprise. And uh, Jim certainly is an outstanding colleague. Uh, his students have nominated him in the past. Uh, he's been recognized from the Journalism Association of Community Colleges countless times, not only as a student in the mid-1980s, but each time the Viking newspaper or City Magazine win a photo award, we know Jim's hand has been involved. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you for the nomination of your peers, colleagues, friends, photographers, reporters, uh, and final selection by the Renewal Committee. I want to recognize you as one of our outstanding colleagues. Thank you. Well, uh, I was born in Long Beach, and uh, I used to come out here and ride my bicycle and play uh, racquetball in the, uh, in the courts over here. And uh, this has been, I got the best job at the school. I know all you other guys got some pretty cool jobs. <laughs> you got a pretty cool job, you got a pretty cool job. But my job, I got a class full of students that want to be there. And uh, that's a big, big plus. Uh, they're all really sharp uh, people that come in there. And uh, I was first attracted to uh, the newsroom when Nancy Redmond, Nancy Redmond is here somewhere, and I came back for a feature writing class. And uh, I heard uh, all the uh, laughter and uh, commotion coming out of the uh, newsroom. And uh, I never had that when I was going through school. I was going through business classes and I was going through marketing classes and consumer behavior and all that other kind of junk. You know, I was following the college promise. I started here, my brother started here. We went on to Cal State Long Beach. I had brothers that went on and became uh, health inspectors. And my other brother went on and became a Steve AI jet pilot flying in Vietnam and a lot of things. Now I got a bunch of uh, vets that came into the newsroom and uh, you wouldn't believe the stories that you hear flying around the newsroom when uh, students are loud full rain i think it's kind of the only place that we really have uh, free speech around here is in the newsroom although uh, pat likes to keep the uh, language toned down a little bit but uh, i had to go through the military uh, you know, it's kind of a mind-bending thing to have to go through that uh, induction center, and uh, you never forget it. And uh, so when they came back, uh, they, uh, they have all kinds of stories. We got ex-Navy, we got ex-Marines, we got ex-Army, he, he, he. Air, Air Force, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> stories that make your jaw drop, you know, and it's just, just perfect. And uh, they're really dedicated students. In fact, we used to get uh, in trouble because people used to drop other classes in order to keep going. And we had to keep, keep them from doing that. But uh, Nancy's really the one to blame for all this. She was the first one to bring the computers in here. There were no computers here at school at all. There were no computer instructors. There was none of that. They just came in, dumped it on the floor, and the students themselves decided, hey, we can do this two weeks, we can have this out. And it took us until three in the morning, but they did it. And this is quite a, uh, an amazing uh, feat for some other people, and that's when they started putting computers in the music department. They put Apple computers. Apple computers in the music department, they put them in the engineering, uh, and everything was good. Of course, uh, I got to thank uh, ACIT, Arnie, Roger, all the rest of them. We would be dead in water without them. Thank you. Uh, 
We've uh, won a lot of things at JACC. It's uh, been a really uh, nice opportunity to meet all the other professionals up and down the state that are actually in the same situation that we're in. Uh, it's nothing new. This thing is running on across the country, and so uh, I want everybody to vote in November. Uh, make sure you get out there and do that. Uh, thanking uh, all the people who originally uh, got me started uh, in the teaching part of this, getting me a, uh, the applied arts and photography. I was supposed to be just handling the photographic end of uh, journalism. But uh, in my studies, uh, I came to believe that this was exactly the thing I was supposed to be doing in exactly this kind of place. And uh, that's, uh, that's a big plus. And uh, I'm going to hate uh, leaving here. But that's the way it goes. So all the rest of you, keep up the good work. You'll be doing fine, I hope. So we'd like to ask all six recipients to please come up for one final recognition and a final photo. And to all of you, thank you for being our colleagues, for sharing your lives with us and your talent and your gifts. And we're grateful to you every day for making this the special place that it is. So please come on up here for one more uh, little quick hurrah on all of us. Say thank you to all of you. If you can all join me in a round of applause also for somebody who's been doing this for the last several years, and this is his last outstanding colleague ceremony. He will be retiring soon. Please uh, join me in thanking Dr. Gary Scott for all of his years supporting this outstanding colleague of one ceremony. You know, I told somebody we spend our whole lives going to school, learning our craft, getting a job, working hard at our job, getting great at our job, promoting at the job, having success in our careers. But nobody ever tells you about not doing the job anymore. And uh, it is a different mindset. Um, I know that Jim says he's the luckiest guy in the world because he had the best gig, but there is no possible way that I could have had all the adventures that I've had without being here at this amazing place, Long Beach City College. So I'm grateful to all of you. and. Uh, There'll be uh, a very interesting presentation Monday. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the few times where I don't have anything to do with it. I just have to sit and watch. It's going to be very interesting. So uh, thanks to all of you. And as we continue now to recognize the incredibly important work that so many people in this room here do, will you please welcome the Vice President of Human Resources, Rose Delgadio. Well, before I get started, congratulations to our outstanding colleagues. You really make it wonderful for us to be here among you, and you make us proud. It's also well-deserved, and uh, we appreciate everything that you've done throughout your career here. With that in mind, um, a few weeks ago, we were here uh, meeting with colleagues uh, during a very difficult uh, time. and. Um, the discussion was not a discussion we wanted to have with our colleagues who we treasure so much. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for being here today and to hanging in there with us. Uh, these are decisions that we've had to make during very, very difficult times. Hasn't been easy for anybody and most especially for those who are directly affected. So if you're here today and you're one of those who's affected, these service awards are in honor of you because we know the hard work and dedication that you've put in at this college, the time you spend, the hours you give us, making this a place where we can truly say we have become a part of that family. So with that in mind, we'd like to honor now and celebrate those colleagues 
who have spent 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and even 35 years of service here at the district. We're celebrating 103 colleagues today, and so at least today we can shine a light on these individuals as we did with our outstanding colleagues and thank them and appreciate them for what they've given to us and what we know many of them will continue to give to us uh, as the years uh, go forward. So with that in mind, let me turn it over to my colleague, uh, Vice President Greg Peterson, who will introduce the five-year service award recipients. Greg? Thank you. Hello, I'd like to invite the, those celebrating five years of service to line up um, on this side. Come on up. <laughs> oh, this is great. Donna Coates. Kimberly Slaney. <laughs> Norlin Capitulo. <laughs> Stephen Shah Nar. <laughs> Monica Deanda. Marianne Palacios. Robert Bob Raposa. <laughs> Byron Cliff Freeland. It's Robert Ha. Robert Ha. Robert Ha? Jacqueline Young. <laughs> Romy DeMasso. <laughs> Do we need a... And all of you five years wanderers who want to come back up for the group picture. This is our wellness plan. You have to walk around. <laughs> Did you sneak in? You'll also notice in there uh, Ms. Camille Bolton, who tried to sneak past me. I'd now like to invite up Vice President Lynn Bynum. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've, whoops. I've got the pleasure of introducing the people who have been here for 10 years. 
Um, it's hard to imagine those of you that accepted a job here at Long Beach City College probably thought to yourselves, well, I don't know if it's going to be a fit, we'll see what it's like, I'll stay for a little bit, maybe get a better job, but lucky us, you decided to hang in there and we're a much better place for it. So congratulations for all of your service for the last 10 years. So could I ask those of you that have your 10 years to be recognized to come up, please? Don't be shy. That's it for? Okay. Annie, come on up. Congratulations. Annie Engel. <laughs> Margaret Antonio Palomares. Giselle Richards. <laughs> haba haba. Sid <laughs> <Sir> Leon. <laughs> Pete Sparks. Last but not least, Anthony Hayes. And if you'll come up here for pictures, please. Okay, everybody hold on for a second. Somebody chickened out and didn't want to be recognized for their 10 years service. And I don't know how he got in the lineup, but Eloy Ortiz only. <laughs> crashers. our relatively new Vice President of Academic Affairs, Gator Lowenstein. We're going to try something a little different. I'm going to ask the 15-year recipients to line up on this side, and then after they get their pen, go ahead and stand on the podium there. <laughs> I'm known as an innovator. Um, Fifteen years is a long time. I've, I've never gotten a 15-year pin from a wife, let alone an employee. So. <laughs> it's a very impressive accomplishment. So, have we, uh, have we got our recipients? Have we? We have one recipient. All right. I know we have more recipients than that. Okay. Here we go. And I know this person's name. I'll bring up Luann Bynum. Uh, 
Oh boy, oh boy. You know, some people, vice president, she just can't train them. You know? I know this person's name, Janae Hahn. I should know this person. Ah, Kiara Hatra. And this is Catherine Each. There were a lot more on my list. Are there any others? Okay, it'll be a cozy photo. Congratulations. Next round of uh, awards, we have uh, Vice President Rose Delgadio. All right. Well, I get the honor of uh, announcing our 20-year recipient, and there's only one. And I saw her earlier, so I'd like to bring up Deli Ukwu. Where is she? Where is she? Yes. Congratulations, Deli. And we'll take the single photo now. <laughs> there literally was only one person. I was here 20 years ago when Delhi first got hired, so it's amazing that so much time passed so quickly. <laughs> All right, and now for our 25 years of service, if we can have you stand over on this side. I've seen, though here they come, okay. We have a total of six people who are receiving this award, but today, here we have three, and I'm going to start with Dorothy Gutierrez. <laughs> Our next person is Mike Nassab. I don't need a card. I don't need no stinking card. And lastly is Nancy Meow Moore. <laughs> Nancy doesn't look 25. I don't get it. Nancy, you're a mother of three children, is that correct? How old are they? 26, 24, 16. 26, 24, 16. I don't get it. Congratulations to all three of you. All right, and now for our 30-year award recipients, if you can again line up over to my right. Thirty years, I guess it worked out for some folks. <laughs> All right. Introducing Renee Powell. Renee? <laughs> Carrie Lawrence, step right on up. <laughs> and 
Sergeant Gringa Huell, 30 years, people. Congratulations to all of you. And now, introducing the granddaddy of it all, 35 year award, Eloy Oakley, our president. All right. Well, now we're going to celebrate 35 years of service to Long Beach City College, and this is truly um, always a wonderful experience. These individuals have made Long Beach City College what it is today. And for all of your work, we are all very, very grateful. So if I can have the 35 years of service recipients come on up. And they do not need cards. <laughs> First, Anita Cano. Donna Brindle. And last but certainly not least, Dr. Michael <laughs> McCallum. <laughs> Please join me in giving them one more round of applause. We hope they'll all be here picking up their 40 year of service awards. <laughs> well, that concludes the uh, award ceremony. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for continuing to make Long Beach City College the great college that it is, and there is cake and coffee outside, so please join in. And again, thank you. Please take the time to visit with your colleagues and thank them for all their years of service.